The Knowledge Hub for Organic Agriculture in Eastern Africa, KHEA project, is being implemented in four East African countries of Uganda, Kenya, Rwanda, and Tanzania, and it's in its first phase of two years. According to the Research Institute of Organic Agriculture, FIBO Survey 2020, Uganda ranks number one with the highest number of organic producers in Africa. In this video, we show you the approaches and practices being promoted by Ugandan organic farmers as selected by Pelham Uganda, a country implementing partner and co-host of the Knowledge Hub for Organic Agriculture in Eastern Africa. As the country implementing partner, Pelham Uganda is working with two centers of excellence. One is in Masaka, that is St. Jude Family Projects, and the other is Kulika Uganda, that is located in Lutisi, in Wakiso District. Pelham Uganda selected uh, six master trainers, and uh, these were uh, uh, selected on uh, a given criteria. One, they having the knowledge in organic agriculture, but also be able to replicate the knowledge with the farmers. Uh, these were trained in Nairobi in October, uh, by iForum. Uh, the trainings were for five days and also asked to train the farmers and uh, the multipliers for five days when we come back home, which, we are, which we've already done in Uganda here. The goal of the project is to, uh, one, uh, collect knowledge on organic agriculture uh, practices, but also uh, disseminate the knowledge on organic agriculture, which we've already done uh, through the trainings we've uh, conducted so far. And then the third one is that through the networking. With networking, we've uh, networked with the uh, WUMU, that is Uganda uh, Matters University, COSI, and uh, it is looking at the research component. Then we have uh, partnered with St. Jude, and then uh, Wika Uganda. St. Jude Family Projects, bound 127 kilometers from Kampala City, deep in Vosense Village, Kabonero Sub County, in Masaka District, Founded in 1997, carries out organic farming practices on a 3.8 acre piece of land, and these are some of the practices they use. The fecal matter that is harvested from the cattle project, after making the biogas and collecting all that biogas and using it for cooking purposes, we later on take it out, you know, because it's filled with probiotics and all these many important bacteria in the rumination process of the ruminant animal we actually still need it in a non-ruminant animal. So we take it out, fry it on fire. After we've fried it on fire, we mix it up in the feeds of these pigs, for example, and then later on feed the pigs. In one way or another, it's going to supplement the feeding process of the pig. The number of other projects around the farm that are basically being you know, used or being run on the farm within a very small area, for example, the contained gardens, just within a small area, someone can harvest plenty. So all through the year, someone has enough to eat, and in one way or another, it promotes food security, especially for the poor farmers that we've, we've been teaching all through the years. Again, when you move around, you see the poultry project, the construction of the buildings has been made in a way that there is enough space utilized vertically than going horizontal, because there's still no more space anymore in, in the country. The population is rising, and land is becoming limited. Land is no longer increasing in size, but the population is increasing. So we have to look out for methods or ways of doing, still farming, but in a way that is going to provide enough for people to eat, despite of having limited space when it comes to land. So the aquaculture project, the ponds we are having on the farm, we have those that are in containers, contained ponds, but again, so we have those natural ponds, which are basically dug in the swampy areas, and in one way or another, they are not affecting the environment, but, but rather promoting the health of the environment or promoting the, the health of the, 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 the macro and microorganisms within the environment itself. A few kilometers away from St. Jude Family Projects is James Cabito, who is one of the project secondary multipliers. James has shown great success after having been part of the Knowledge Hub for Organic Agriculture in Eastern Africa, KHEA training that was conducted early this year, 2021, at the St. Jude Family Project. project KCOA. St. Jude era nga gukwata ku nime yobutonde nga mulimu okola nakavundira gwe twandise compost manure ni wabawo plant tea ebijimu sebyo 
biba bya amazi nenga bikolebwa mu muddo ogwakiragala ne wabawo silale oba uh, silale oyonga ava mu gwe tuita mani wati ava mu busa oba mu kalimbwe oba mu bintu ebyo ebiva mu bisoro nsomo gwa tuyamba okubera anti buli yajja mu somo ogo twa teka teka ne tufuka ba member ne tukole ekibine ekyo kibaita chesiga organic agriculture farmers association James has gone ahead to offer land to be used by the community for further organic farming projects Still in a distance of over 259 kilometers from St Jude family projects in Rugando Cell Nyakajeme sub county Rukungiri district is another farmer Ruth Mweba Zamakanda, who attended the KCOA project training at St. Jude and is now fully and proudly practicing organic farming on a small scale. Some of the things that we learned was uh, to grow food and we came back, we did these raised beds that you see here. We started making our own raised beds. We've used mount, sack mounds to grow food and the food is growing healthy. We are developing um, an urban center demonstration farm for people who come from towns to see what we do. And uh, one of the challenges we had here was water, lack of enough water, especially during sunny season. But because of the training and the exposure, we have decided to dig out our own underground water reservoir tank that's uh, going to hold water and we believe that water is going to supply us and feed this farm for the rest of the year. We now make our own manure, we do our bokash, that is something that we learned at St. Jude. So that has helped us, if you can look around, our, our vegetables look more healthy because of the, the manures that we are using now. But also what is interesting is that this is a community farm. It's a demonstration farm where people from the community can come and learn. We are open to the community. They can come and learn how to use small spaces like you've seen around and grow your own food, healthy food. So this training with KCOA uh, has exposed us to so many things and we believe in the next one, two years, we are going to have a better farm. In addition to St. Jude Family Projects, here is another center of excellence, Kulika Uganda, a non-governmental organization that has existed for over 30 years in Uganda, located in Lutisi Village, Namayumba Sub-County, Wakiso District. Florence Namulindwa Dumba, one of the KHE Air Project Master Trainers and also Project Manager at Kulika Uganda, presents some of the repellents and natural fertilizers they use on their farm. We collect yulin from the rabbit and of recently even I took a step of taking it to Kawanda to be tested to find the content of nitrogen. When you apply it, you know it smells also, it repels insects. So it's a multi purpose apart from giving you or giving nutrients to your soil and plants, it also repels pests as well. Then also we have vermin tea, we have vermin compost, we have compost itself, we have biochar, we have bokash, we are, we, we are using super magro, we have native microbes. We have gardens we design which can help to harvest water during the dry season, I mean during the rain season, so that during the dry season the production continues. We developed one biopesticide which is working very well and it has been also approved and published by FAO. It's a, it is a biopesticide, the most active ingredient is called Rotanone and it's really good for more from Tephrosia. You just pick the leaves, you pound them, then you sieve because you need to put in to create a pressure to spray. We've been spraying aphids, armyworms. One time we are in Movende, we are working with a team of a hundred groups of farmers, youth farmers. And then that is the time when there was outbreak of armyworm. I think you remember that time. It is really amazing that we just use the, our youth farmers. 
just use the tephrosia and then you could see the armyworm dying. So what we are talking about, it is really cost effective. This kind of agriculture is cost effective. It is environmentally friendly and also socially what? Just. In addition to those practices, Pulika Uganda also applies other measures as used by St. Jude Family Projects. As part of the project, we have so far trained 272 multipliers and 152 farmers and we are proud of the results that are coming through. We are seeing an increased number of farmers embracing organic farming and uh, stories of change are being documented and I'm sure this will enrich the knowledge platform. And we also believe, strongly believe, that uh, organic farming knowledge and practices will be widespread around Uganda by the end of the project.